welcome back. Think we're out of great magicians? Ha, you're wrong. Take a look. When I first started on magic, I started out with birds. I started out doing manipulation, a lot of standard magic. I had a partner for years, and uh, like Penn and Teller, we were a magic duo. We make some comedy with magic. Those were really good times. But as you get a little older and you start to look back at your life, there's some things in my life before I became an entertainer that weren't all that funny to me. There was loss, there was loneliness, addiction. Now when I hit bottom and I was looking for something, you know, I remembered the joy that I had taken in my childhood hobby, you know, magic, you know, and that's how I changed my path. What saved me, there's the creative process focusing my attention away from things that were putting me on the wrong path. I mean, you, you, you're using your imagination, and with your imagination, you can basically create anything. That's a story I tell in my magic now, like with the trick I'm doing tonight. Uh, it's the most personal piece I've ever done. I think I know who I am now. Let's hear it for Puck. Well, I grew up in foster homes until I got adopted at the age of five. Uh, my adopted family was wonderful, uh, especially, especially my new dad. Uh, he's the one that took me to my first magic show and bought me my first trick. Uh, my new dad was my biggest supporter and he was my biggest fan. Uh, he even started booking my shows. I was called Puck the Young Magician. Uh, when I was 14, uh, my dad passed away. It was at that time that my love for magic kind of faded as well and I honestly didn't touch it again for another 20 years. And during that time, I tried some other things. I was in the Army for a little bit. I went to college, and eventually I found my way back to my first love, you know, which was magic. Now, 35 years after my adopted father had passed away, I stumbled upon some information that led me to the identity of my biological father, and I was surprised to learn that he was a famous jazz musician, and I was named after him. Uh, he was a legendary Billie Holiday's pianist, and his most famous song has become a jazz standard. Now, unfortunately, though, he died before I was able to find out who he was, but... Now, I like to look at it like this. In my life, I was blessed. You know, I had two earthly fathers. I had one who gave me the DNA to become an entertainer, and the other who gave me the courage to follow my dreams. So tonight, I'd like to dedicate this next piece to my two dads. Thank you.
Yes, I mean, it's something I've always wanted to do for a long time, and uh, I'm just happy to be able to share this with everyone. Aw, you're just a big softie, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Is this a way of connecting with your birth father? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, my birth father and the father who raised me, my adoptive father, you know, because without them, I definitely would probably not have had the talent to do what I do now. You must inspire a lot of people. Um, you know, it's funny you should say that. I had kind of a troubled teen, teenage years, and I've taken that come combined with my magic and I've actually turned it into a keynote speech that I do for at-risk youth and kind of teach them how to avoid a lot of the obstacles that I went through growing up. You That's know, incredible. And do you think that they're learning the lesson you're trying to teach them? The questions that they ask me after the speech lets me know that they were really paying attention and they really got something out of it. So it makes, makes me feel really good inside. That's amazing. Okay, Puck, it's time to see if Penn and Teller figured out your trick. <laughs> hey, Puck, this is going to be a... Um... You have to excuse me. It's going to be a tough one for me because I'm a little, um, little choked up. I'm not usually choked up during this uh, right after Magic Tricks, but that was in incredibly moving. And uh, you'll forgive me. I'm going to try to pull it together and talk about the magic if I could because there's, there's no doubt that that was um, such a touching tribute. So forgive me to, ju to jump over some stuff here. Um, one of your dads was a... Uh, piano player and you have that great yes. great hand dexterity uh a lot of that's nature and nurture i suppose and and there's a lesser known jazz musician uh ace mcdonald you may have heard of yes. and um, mm. you did that uh wonderful uh, visible palm aces stuff you took some wonderful standards and worked them together in a in a, in a really really new way and i'm trying <laughs> i'm trying very hard to get through this but um I just want to say that um, your dads would be so proud of you. And um, you touched us, you moved us, and I, I don't think you fooled us. Ah. And I don't think I can say any more <laughs> if you'll forgive me. It's no, making I, me cry. I, I didn't fool you. I just you know, I want to say thank you. I mean, the platform that you've given us as magicians and to be able to do something that's so emotional and, uh, and personal to me on this show and share it with the world, I mean, I thank you again for having me. Well, thank oh. you so much for doing that. Oh, well, that was wonderful, Puck. You brought tears to my eyes, too. Thank you, Puck. Thank you. We're taking a quick time out. We'll get back in the game when Foolish returns. Yeah. 